welcome back to the channel today this is basically the part two of us getting our truck and trailer weighed we're actually headed to love's fuel station right now i have the trailer behind me so what i'm going to do when we get there is i'm going to basically fill up with fuel fill up my def tank and then we're going to basically get a truck weight and then we'll be able to have a better idea of if i have enough payload for this fifth wheel now if you've been following me for a long time you kind of know the outcome of this video so let's get into it so stay tuned i am going to be doing some videos going over some of the features for towing in this truck and i'm also going to give you my first impressions on the tow of this um 2019 Kiso Cooper with the GMC Sierra. Now I've never towed with a one ton diesel GMC before, so this is my first. You might have seen some three quarter tons, but this truck is a little different and it has like some cool features on it that I haven't really known how to use in the past. But we're about to pull up the loves here. I always go to loves because they're always so clean and they have a cat scale, so that just makes life a little bit easier too. But I thought it was right off the interstate, but I guess we have to, I don't know, we might have jumped off too early, but it's okay, we'll keep going. When you're hooked up to a trailer, you can't, you can't turn around, so, or you could, but that's when bad things happen, so we're gonna keep going straight. Now that we got the truck and trailer weighed, I want to show you guys the numbers with just the truck, my family, and my gear. I did this in the last video. It's probably something you should watch before this one, but while you're already here, I'll just pretty much show you the spreadsheet that I built in that video. And if you want, you can go back and watch the whole thing. But I want to show you guys Keystone's website. Now, my trailer's a few years older than the ones that's new, but you'll get my idea what I'm going to try to show you. Anytime you see weights online, they're always going to show you a dry weight. And let me explain a little bit more on the website. I'm on Keystone's website, and this is going to be a 2023 MBI that I'm showing you for the uh, specifications. I did do a walk around video on this specific trailer. If you are interested, be sure to go check it at the end of this video. But right here, you can see the shipping weight is 11,847. Uh, the carrying capacity is going to be 2,133. And then they're saying the hitch weight is going to be 1,980 pounds. Anytime you see a dry hitch weight or any advertised weight for the tongue or hitch online, nine times out of 10, that's not going to include propane. That's not going to include batteries. So just keep that in mind. And if you do decide to build your trailer from the factory, any options that you choose or if you buy one at the dealership, any options that they chose for that trailer is going to affect the weight. So that's something you have to consider when you look at dry weights and dry hitch weights. So for example, if you do decide you want to get the uh, Solar Flex 600, it's $11,000, holy smokes. But that's going to add weight and depending on where they put those uh, solar panels and the batteries, that's going to increase your hitch weight. Keep in mind, most RVs are optional with the AC unit in the front. So that's gonna also increase the weight. I'm on RVUSA.com and if you do have an older RV, this is a great website to get some of the specs for your RV. So back in 2019, I bought mine in 2018, but this was a 2019 model. They were showing the dry weight at 11,575. So the trailer has gone up in weight. So just keep that in mind. So even though the trailer is actually a little bit shorter than mine, the 2023 is still heavier. Now, if you take this number and divide it into the dry weight, that's going to give you 17%. So I want you guys to keep that in mind when we do the numbers for my setup. In the last video I did on my GMC Sierra 3500, I explained all these numbers and showed you where I found them from. And I also went to the scale and I got my truck weighed. And then this is the numbers I came up with for that. Now, with that being said, you saw online that the Keystone Cougar has a 1,980 pound dry 
hitch weight, right? So let's go ahead and put that in at 1,980 pounds. And this was the trailer's weight, 11,575. So in essence, I basically have 960 pounds of available payload. But if you're doing your math this way, this is incorrect. You're not supposed to do your weight research off of the website. Here's what I always recommend. If you are looking to buy an RV and obviously you don't know the pin weight, I always recommend you take the gross fuel coit rating of the trailer and then multiply that by 20 to 22%. If you plan on getting a generator built in up front, if you plan on doing a washer and dryer, I would definitely go 22% and maybe even add 1% if you do both of those things. So do 23%. So let's go ahead and look at the weights from the cat scale with my truck and my trailer. Now you just saw that the curb weight of my truck was 8,318 pounds. And when I got my family weighed with all my gear, it was 9,160 pounds. Now let's go ahead and see what the gross fuel weight is of my truck with the pin weight from my trailer. Now here's the cat scale sticker for my Sierra and Cougar. Now if you watched the last video, you saw that the steer axle was actually higher than this number. And the drive axle, to no one's surprise, went up significantly because of the pin weight. This is what everyone messes up when it comes down to towing. When that pin weight hits this truck, literally it puts everybody over their capacity. So this is just something you really have to consider. Now, if you add these two numbers together, you get 11,600 pounds. As you remember, my gross fuel weight rating was going to be 12,100 pounds. So as you can see, I am under on my gross fuel weight rating. And my gross axle weight rating in the front and rear are not being exceeded. Something to consider with the weight distribution is with the Cougar hooked up, I'm at 44% front and 56% rear. It almost flip-flopped when I hooked up the trailer. And it took 80 pounds off the front axle. This is something to consider uh, when you're doing your weight to try to figure out your pin weight. So let's go ahead and do that now. In order to figure out the pin weight, you have to go back to the first yellow slip. The front and rear axle was 9,160 pounds. That's adding both together. If you take the Sierra and Cougar yellow slip, both axles on the Sierra was 11,600 pounds. You're going to subtract those two numbers and that's going to give you 2,440 pounds. So as you can see, I still have enough capacity to take an extra person. Um, I can take more gear with me. I can even get a larger fuel tank if I want to and still be within my limits. So one thing I will recommend is if you are looking to get that washer and dryer and any extra stuff, that will change your pin weight. Keep in mind, when I went camping, we went and dry camped out in Moab. I had 81 gallons of water when I got this done. So I may have to redo this without that water. And that's something to consider. If you don't know where your water tank is, that might be something to think about because some RVs put it closer to the front. In my case, is out back, which means it could have taken a little bit of weight off of the pin because when I got my truck and trailer weighed last with my Ram, it was 2,700 pounds. Now, I did have water back there, but I also had water in my black and gray tank because, again, we were dry camping and we used a good bit of that water. And, of course, it got put up to the front. But let's go ahead and go through the rest of this spreadsheet. So as you guys can see, my gross combined vehicle weight rating is 23,140. That's going to be the truck and the trailer total weight. And I'm under there with the Sierra. As far as my payload goes, you guys saw that I'm under. And towing capacity is really not important when you're doing your numbers. Because you will never be able to get to this number without exceeding your payload capacity. If you take my loaded trailer, this is what it was on the yellow slip. It was 12.4. But you normally have to add these two numbers together to give you the total weight of the trailer. So that's going to be 14,840 pounds. Now, I know someone's going to jump in the comment section and say that payload is an arbitrary number. And you don't have to worry about that. You can just worry about your gross accurate rating and your tie capacity. That is not a written rule. I don't care what people say online. Do your own research. You see the research I just gave you? Those numbers are on the door for a reason. Ford and GM just announced this year that they're adding onboard scales for the trucks. I promise you, those are not for your benefit alone. 
they're there for them too because they'll be able to know whether you exceeded your gross fuel core rate rating. And if you did, I'm pretty sure they can void your warranty. So it's up to you, whatever you wanna do, I don't care. I did this research for you, take it and go with it wherever you please. And be sure to like the video if you did like it, subscribe to the channel, make sure your bell notifications on so I can see your comments and I'll see you guys in the next video.